Hey all, today I come to discuss Balance Druid and Mythic Plus. So this video is really designed to go over the talents, utility, as right, um, and how to use cooldowns on Balance Druid. Balance Druid has gotten a bit more complex as to how they function while pushing keys, and I've seen a lot of strife in the community in regards to Mythic Plus for Balance Druid, so this seems like a good video to make overall. If you guys really want my personal opinion, I believe that Balance Druid is the third or fourth best DPS spec in competition with Frost Mage, um, Assassination or Subtlety Rogue, and then Affliction Warlock. This means that the class overall is very strong for pushing, but at the same time will be weak for lower level content where the mobs are still just getting plowed and falling over very quickly. You also need to understand what's going on in Mythic Plus now to fully grasp Balance Druid, but overall the class is still incredibly strong, just not really as face roll Starfall spam as it was in Legion. Additionally to that, running in a pug or like a non-consistent group will create for some additional challenges that Legion Moonkin did not face. Um, how to use your utility and how to use your cooldowns are very, very important concepts and I want you guys to be taking away from this video. In addition to this, if you want some background on myself, I participated in MDI number two and have consistently been a top Mythic Plus Moonkin for many Mythic Plus seasons as I started pushing Mythic Plus and pushing higher keys inside of Nighthold. You can also check me out on Raider.io if you care as uh, Tettles of Hygel. Alright, so let's jump into the first section of the video. So first off, we got Talents. So far, the Talents that I've been playing with for the Tier 15 row is Force of Nature for the Tank Utility. So far, Tank Damage in Battle for Azeroth has been incredibly high, and proper use of trees are very important. Utilization of trees for kiting, soaking mechanics, and giving the tank a little bit of breathing room while no large cooldowns are running is a very large benefit. I believe that Force of Nature is the best talent in this row overall. Even though it might not be the best for damage, it's the best overall talent in this row. So Tier 30, we got Wild Charge for Mobility. Not much to explain here. Tier 45 is Resto Affinity because Swift Mend is very, very strong and will heal for about 30k non crit and 60k crit for my gear right now. That and Wild Growth and Sketchy AoE healing moments make for Resto Affinity to be pretty good in this stage of the game. For the Tier 60 row, Typhoon is by far the best talent here. The displacement cancels casts, slows mobs, and allows for better positioning on mobs overall for the group. Um, Typhoon is insanely powerful if used correctly. So, as for one of the more important damage rows, Incarnation is what I believe to be the best talent in the Tier 75 row. This gives huge burst on the 3 minute cooldown, and when paired with some of the balance specific Azerite traits such as Streaking Stars and Lively Spirit, it allows for some really crazy burst overall. As for tier 90, obviously Twin Moons is the best here, and then for tier 100, Fury Volume Burst is incredibly, incredibly strong on multiple targets. You should also wait for the mobs to get grouped before popping Fury Balloon. This is also helped by Demon Hunter's Sigil of Chains and uh, Blood Death Knight Gorfiend's Grasp. That was a pretty quick rundown of the talents I've been playing because honestly, I think this should be self-explanatory to you. If you're watching this video, I feel like you should have a better grasp of how to play the game and how the class functions. So that was kind of like a just a quick, what am I playing? Not really an explanation in depth analysis of what I'm playing. If you're looking for something else, you can read a Mythic Plus guide on Wowhead uh, that's written by me, or you can watch some of my past videos while I explain the talents. I've seen a lot of differences in a lot of people in regards to Azerite choices. I've also seen a lot of misinformation and a lot of inferior choices being recommended to people. So if anything, I hope this clears up a lot for some of the people who might be curious as to what Azerite traits they should be running. So the top choice in Mythic Plus is Trait Stacking Lively Spirit up to 3. So basically this trait gives you an intellect buff based on how many spells your healer casted during your innervate. Some of the best targets for this are Holy Paladins with Holy Avenger active, Mistweaver Monk spamming Soothing Mist every single GCD, or any healer using the Troll Racial Berserking. This is the best intermediary between AoE and single target damage, and how you use this trait is interesting though. So basically you're going to choose packs that will live for 30 seconds or longer, and pop Incarnation with Innervate, and then delay your Fury of Loon until you get the Intellect buff. Then you're going to try to spam as many Starfalls on AoE or Star Surge on single target. The difficulty with this build is understanding what your tank is pulling and how to play it. There's also nothing wrong with using Lively Spirit and Incarnation for priority damage in a pack and bombing full single target and AoE just to delete one high priority mob. Okay, so that is the top choice, which has been pretty difficult to set up due to you needing to know when to use the cooldowns efficiently, um, coordinating with your healer as to how to properly give you stacks, but honestly, um, whenever this is used properly, it is very, very powerful, and it's honestly what I've been playing, and I believe it is by far the best uh, Azerite trait overall. So for the next top tier trait, we have Streaking Stars. Streaking does so much damage on single target inside of Burst that it really destroys bosses. And it also does some damage on AoE, but most of it is priority damage, so kind of play around it. Um, so basically, the second repeat ability that you cast will shoot the Streaking Star at your last cast target. So if you Starfall, it will literally shoot a Streaking Star at your last cast target that you like last Moonfired or Sunfired or whatever else that you just cast on them. 
Uh, streaking overall is a medium difficulty trait as it doesn't require any coordination from your healer like Lively, but you do need to understand how to use Incarnation and Maximum Efficiency to make it work out. So the next couple of Azurai builds are going to be a tier lower than Lively and Streaking. So overall, I would rate Lively, Spirit, and Streaking Stars as the A tier. So now moving on to the B tier, we have uh, Lunar Shrapnel and Generic Traits. So as for Lunar Shrapnel, this Azurite trait should be played with Soul of the Forest and Trash Heavy Dungeons. Uh, generally speaking, you should also play this with Fortified whenever you're also reliant on killing trash. So like if you're the primary trash killer and you need a lot of AoE, Lunar Shrapnel is pretty strong. Uh, but the issue with Lunar Shrapnel for general purpose use is that you do sacrifice a lot of single target damage in order to play it. As you, one, don't have a burst trait, and two, you should be really playing Soul of the Forest for Lunar Shrapnel as it allows you to be able to drop as many star falls as possible. The trash has to be one, high priority, and two, lasting a long time for you to really be able to say, oh, I think this is a Lunar Shrapnel dungeon. So then the other B tier option is some of the generic traits. Some of them, such as Archive of the Titan, Unstable Catalyst, Champion of Azeroth, and Blightborn Infusion are all very good for AoE while still being pretty strong on single target. And overall, um, they are just flat damage increases or uh, flat stat increases for the most part, but they are still pretty good. So we got the last trait to discuss. It's uh, Power of the Moon. As I've seen a lot of discussion about this trait in the Dream Grove, Power of the Moon is incredibly mediocre for AoE while also being very, very fucking bad on single target. Please do not play with Power of the Moon. The only time it should be taken is on Explosive Weeks, where you're the primary Explosive Killer. Beyond that, do not take it. It is not a good damage trait. No combination of times 2 Power of the Moon or times 3 Power of the Moon will be a better damage gain over Lively Spirit, Streaking Stars, or even the Generics by and large. If you care about padding overall damage, I'm sure Power of the Moon might be better than Generics or Streaking Stars, but if you actually care about completing dungeons in time, then Streaking, Generics, Lively Spirit, or even Lunar Shrapnel will be better in terms of time saved. So moving on after Azurite, the next session of the video will discuss the utility associated with Balanced Druid. Balanced Druid, and the Druid class in general really, has a large amount of utility that is limited to a few classes, and I'll discuss some of the most important ones that are specific to Balance. So starting off, we've got Solar Beam, arguably the most important utility out of the balance kit. Solar Beam is an 8-yard AoE silence on a 60-second cooldown. Uh, this creates for some insane lockdown on large packs that cast frequently whenever you no longer have stuns, or there are mobs that you would rather interrupt as opposed to hard seeing. So like if you're holding your leg sweep for the next pack, or you think Solar Beam is just going to be very good for the AoE silence, Solar Beam is one of the most powerful interrupts in the game. So next up, we got Force of Nature. Tank damage in Battle for Azeroth has increased significantly compared to the Legion counterpart. Thus, the ability to taunt mobs off your tank for 10 seconds is very powerful. When used on bosses, you should practically pop Force of Nature pretty much on cooldown, as it really doesn't taunt any bosses in uh, Battle for Azeroth. And then when used on trash, when used on trash that is deadly to your tank, you should either ask your tank when does he need it, or really drop it when he begins to kite or to reset necrotic stacks. Additionally, be careful with Sanguine. I mean, I've made the mistake before. Don't taunt the mobs in Sanguine. It kind of sucks. You're going to waste a lot of time if you do that. Next up, Typhoon. Typhoon is a knockback that also applies a slow to all your targets that are affected by your knockback. This ability gives you a very strong control over the mobs in the form of canceling casts, moving mobs, and creating a gap for your tank to kite. You should really coordinate with your group as to how to most effectively use Typhoon. Additionally, this uh, talent is also very strong for Sanguine as it moves the mobs out of the Sanguine pools, generally speaking. As for the last utility spell that I'm going to speak on, we have Soothe. Soothe is an Enraged Dispel and one of the very few in the game. I think only the Druid class and the Hunter class have Enraged Dispels. So mobs that Enraged generally do a significant amount of more damage and destroy your tank. They will do a lot more damage because they also melee harder and they melee more frequently. So knowing what mobs you can or cannot Soothe or even during the Raging Affix makes for Soothe to be a very strong piece of utility. So you can actually Soothe off the Enrage uh, from the Raging Affix if you guys don't know that. So the final topic I'm going to discuss in this video is how to best use cooldowns. So baseline, Balanced Druid has one three-minute cooldown called Celestial Alignment. By itself, Celestial Alignment is very, very weak, actually. However, Celestial Alignment can be enhanced by talenting Incarnation Chosen of Loon, making it grant a larger percent damage increase. I would really suggest taking the talent of Incarnation if you understand how to use your cooldowns appropriately. The next cooldown that you should have access to is Fury of Loon. Fury of Loon is a one minute cooldown that gives an AoE beam of energy that comes down from the sky that also grants 40 astral power over the duration. Fury of Loon is accessed by the tier 100 talent row and you should really be taking this in Mythic Plus as it is very strong. Force of Nature, Ad additionally Force of Nature is another one minute cooldown that Balanced Druid typically has access to in Mythic Plus. Uh, Force of Nature summons three Treants down that taunt and melee the mobs granting 20 astral power instantly. And then we got the final damage cooldown that I'm going to talk about which is Innervate. Uh, if you have Lively Spirit Traits, Innervate is a very powerful damage cooldown on a 3 minute CD that grants a significant amount of intellect after the buff expires off your healer. So how should you use these cooldowns? The most important part of Balanced Root in 
BFA Mythic Plus is allocating cooldowns and figuring out how to use cooldowns appropriately and understanding your group, really. When assessing how to use these cooldowns, some of the most important points I consider whenever I'm really determining like when to use my cooldowns are how many cooldowns are up, like what does my group have available, really? Is there a priority target in this pack or on this boss? How long will this pack or boss last? And then really what is up ahead? So in regards to how many cooldowns are up and how long this pack or boss will last, they really tie into one another. So understanding how long the pack will last and what value your cooldowns will give is important. Force of Nature and Fury of Loon can essentially be used on cooldown with higher priority target on AoE over single target, generally speaking. However, Incarnation and Innervate, which are essentially 30 seconds long on a 3 minute cooldown, need to be understood how and when to use them. So think about how healthy the mobs are, how big the pull is, and what other cooldowns your groups are using. Like. Does your Frost Mage have Icy Veins and Berserking and everything else up? Comet Storm, Frozen Orb, whatever else. Additionally, what is up ahead is the next step. Like, are you going huge the next pull where you might get 30 second durations out of this pull, but you're actually going to go so big the next pull that there is a very, very large chance that you wipe where you're actually going to want all of your cooldowns? So, like, okay, sure, you're going to get benefit out of using your cooldowns for this pack, but realistically, even though you're going to get the 30 second duration, holding it for the next pack is de going to definitely be better for you. Lastly, is there a priority target? Like, is it better to Star Surge destroy one mob, or is it really worth more to Starfall and Beast on AoE? If you have something like Sub Rogues or Affliction Locks that get a lot of bonus single target damage off AoE, with a lot of low priority AoE mobs standing around the priority target, you probably should be single targeting. Like, is there a high priority single target mob? You should also probably be single targeting. There's nothing wrong with popping single target into a mob whenever you have your cooldowns rolling, even if it is an AoE pack, because generally speaking, um, there are only a couple mobs like in each instance that are really high priority, and making sure that they die very quickly is very important. So all in all, I think Munkin is a lot more complex in Battle for Azeroth compared to the Starfall spam variant in Legion that a lot of people are used to and comfortable with. Additionally, pugging has gotten a lot more difficult for Balanced Druid overall. Balanced Druid is still good in Mythic Plus and one of the top Mythic Plus classes overall if used properly. You just really need to understand some of the concepts that I discussed in this video. And then if you have questions in regards to some of the content that I discussed here, you can message me on Discord or leave a comment in the comment section. I'll try to get back to all of those. I'm going to leak my Twitch, Patreon, and Discord server in the description. And then I hope everybody has a great rest of their day. Peace. Don't prepare the moon.